Hi guys, welcome to the seventh edition of our Ruby for Newbies screencast series. I'm Andrew Burgess, and in this screencast, we are going to look at working with directories and files in Ruby. So let's jump into that right away. What we're going to learn today can be done um, for the most part in IRB. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got a terminal window open here and we're going to open an IRB prompt. So Ruby has two classes that are going to be kind of the domain of the fun functions uh, we're going to look at today. The first is the dir class and the second is the file class. And as you'll probably guess, dir works with directories and file works with files. So let's start with dir. Um, if we we can look at the methods on dir um, like this, dir.methods.sort. Methods is just an array, and here we're sorting them, and you can see we've got all these methods here. Um, but we're only going to look at a couple of them. And let's start by looking at um, dir.pwd. So pwd, you might recognize this from um, just pretty much any shell. Um, for example, here, if, we open, if I open up a new tab here in my terminal, and I just type um, pwd, you'll see we get slash user slash Andrews. PWD stands for print working directory. Print is the verb, so telling it to print out the working directory or the directory that we're currently working in. Just like a shell, Ruby has the idea of a current folder. And so, as you can see here, our current folder, in this case, is users Andrew desktop, which is the folder that I started this IRB session in. Okay, so that's pretty basic. Um, what about changing the directory. Well, if we go dir.change directory, then I don't have any folders in the desktop, so I'll pass it a string and I'll go back up one, and then I can go down into the documents folder, and zero is our uh, return value, but you can see our prompt is changed to users slash Andrew slash document slash documents. I'm going to go change back I'm um, using the same going to the desktop just as I got to uh, the documents folder in the first place. And we can see that we've changed back just like that. Okay, so what if we want to uh, do something with the files in this directory? Well, there are a couple ways to get them. First of all, I'll mention that whenever we, we get a list of files or a file, from a directory. They're always handed to us as just strings. They're not an actual file object in Ruby. They're just the string, which is the file name. And from there, we can do what we want to do with it. So the first method we'll look at for getting files from a directory is the glob method. Now, glob is a, a class method, just like uh, pwd and uh, change directory, chdir, as we've looked at. As you'll notice here on the desktop, I have a directory here just called some directory and we've got two files in there. So let's say we want to, if we say glob, what this is going to do, and we're going to pass into glob a pattern. And this pattern is going to run, uh, it's going to kind of sort through all the files in some directory and only return the ones that match the pattern. It's not quite as strong, like it's not quite as um, robust as a regular expression, but it gives us some basic capabilities. For example, I can say star.txt, and you can see I get nothing. And of course, the reason I get nothing is because I haven't changed, I'm not inside that sum directory, sum dir yet. So what I'm going to do is say change dir into sum dir. And now if we say dir.pwd, you can see we're in there. Now, if I run glob star.txt, you can see we get an array with file.txt in there. I could change this to file.rb and we'll get that as well. I'm sorry, star.rb and we'll get code.rb instead. Besides using one star, we could use two stars to refer to any level of directory. So if we did that, we would get code.rb, but if there was another, if there was a folder within some directory, we would get any Ruby files within that folder as well and any folders, star star or asterisk asterisk is just kind of a recursive directory structure thing. Um, we can also use sets of characters as you would in regular expressions. So we could say within the square bracket, so we could say A to Z, and this would give us any files 
that have a one character extension. If we do a to z, um, a to z, we should get code.rb because we're asking it for any file name dot two single, um, an a to z and an a to z. So we have the R captured by this first set and the B captured by the second set there. And we could also do um, something like this where we say star dot curly brace and we could say RB comma TXT and it would do either one as you can see we get f both files there. Okay, so that's, those are some of the global, or not global methods, but class methods. Um, although in Ruby, as you might recall, we don't exactly have class methods, but that's what they are. Um, that's what they act as here. That's a bit complicated for where we are though. So just consider these class methods for now and realize that we can also make instances of this dir object as well. And we do that as the way you might expect, dir.new, and we could pass in our uh, some directory. And of course we would want to assign this to a variable D. And again, I've forgotten that since we're inside, so, uh, some dir we can't find it so I'm just going to tell us to go up and now you can see we're back dir.pwd on the desktop so you can see this is very much like working in a shell and now we will say d equals some dir.new and if I uh, clear this and print out d you can see d is indeed a dir object so what can we do with this dir directory object well, there are a couple things we can do with it, but before we go on to those, I want to show you one more way um, that's very common in Ruby for working with objects, some types of objects. One of these is the directory and also files, as we may see. But what we've done here is stored this directory in the variable d. However, often a directory like this isn't actually ever stored in a variable because we use an, another uh, method, which is open. Now, open works just like... Um, new in that we could assign this assign it to a variable just like that however open has another property and that is that we can pass a block to it and the directory object that's returned from open is passed to the block and so we can do this instead we can just say puts d and once we end it you can see our directory there is put out our directory object is put out and nil is returned from the block and so this is just kind of a nice way to um, it adds another block level to your code and gives you a reason to keep certain code indented it's a nice way to keep your code clean if you can do all the things you want to do with your directory in one chunk but all the methods we're going to look at will work either way either storing the directory in a variable like this or getting it passed to a block parameter like this all the methods that we have are going to be the same so let's look at some of those methods. So d, I believe, is still our sumdir object. Great. So we have d dot each. And as you might guess, each just iterates over each of the entries in d. So if we go each uh, do, or we'll actually just call this file, and then we can just say puts file, so we can see what we have. And, and you can see we have four entries here, dot, 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 code, and code.rb and file. If you're wondering what dot and dot dot are, you'll remember if you've ever worked in the terminal very much, that dot stand is representative of the current folder, so sumdir itself, and dot dot is representative of the folder that is the parent directory of sumdir, so in this case that would be desktop. And these are actually considered to be um, directories um, in their type there, those are directories well, there, these are actually strings, but these are directories. If we, we'll see how to find out the directories a bit later. However, you may not want to iterate over them like that. You might just want to get all the entries. And so for that, we have just the entries um, method, which just returns to us an array of all the entries that are in um, the directory. It's pretty simple. And that is basically what we're going to the extent of what we're going to talk about directories. There's a bit more that you can do with them, but those few basic steps are really going to be the majority of what you're ever going to use. So let's move on to talk about files. As you might guess, the file object, or the file 
well, it is an object, but the file class is the container for all of the file methods and um, the way to create file objects. The first thing that you may find useful is the absolute path method. So if we uh, dir .change directory back into that sumdir, so we have some files to work with, we can say uh, file. So we know that we have a file in there called, uh, what was it called, file.txt. However, we want to know the full path for that file. Well, we can say file dot absolute path file.txt. And as you can see here, we're returned the absolute path. And this helps if you're ever having issues with absolute and relative paths. Having an absolute path makes gives you the absolute certainty that you've got what you wanted. But what if we want to go the other way around? Let's say we have an absolute path. And so let's just take this absolute path that we get here and store it in the variable path. So path equals what we'd expect there. Let's say we have path and we just want to get the file name out of there. Now, of course, you can do the work yourself, or at least you might think you could, but it might not be as simple as possible because remember, here we're on a Mac, and on a Mac, the directory divisors are forward slashes. However, on Windows, I believe the directory separators in a string like this or a path are back slashes. And so if you were going to do this, um, thoroughly, you would have to, you couldn't just divide the last backs or forward slash, you'd have to figure out well, what operating system are we on, and you know, there's more than just Mac and Windows in the world, so is there something else that I should be looking for? Well, Ruby has that all figured out for you. In the file.base name path, or file.base name method, if we just pass it this path, and you can see we get file.txt out, which is the base name file.base name has a, uh, can take a second parameter, which is any suffix of the file name that you want to take off. Most often, you would use this just to take off the extension like that. So you can see we pass in the path and we know this is the extension and it'll take it off. Of course, if it doesn't find that extension, it won't take anything off. But the neat thing is that this isn't kept for just the extension. If I just wanted to remove xt from any file, you can see we're returned file.t. So it just really treats that as a string and says, you know, anything you want to take off the end, you can, but most often that would be the file extension. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Well, while we're talking about divisor file or uh, directory dividers like this, let's talk about a really interesting method, file dot join. Let's say we have uh, dir dot pwd in this case is some dir, and we want to we want to make the absolute path. But let's say we didn't have the file dot absolute path method. If we were going to make something like that, or if we just were going to form it from scratch, we might say dir, or we could uh, just do a string interpolation here. Say dir dot pwd forward slash uh, file dot txt, and that gives us this string that we expect. But if we were writing a script that's going to be used across multiple operating systems, that wouldn't work. So what we would want to do is use the file.join method. And basically this takes as many parameters as we want to pass it. And so we can just pass it dir.pwd, uh, and we can pass it uh, file.txt, and it will do what's appropriate for the operating system and return us the appropriate path. And of course this can take as many as we want, so we could have done, um, you know, users Joe uh, documents some file uh, dot doc and it would pass us exactly what we expect just like that. Okay, so that's the file dot join method. What about deleting files? Well, deleting files is probably just about as simple as you expect. Uh, let's see, we are in I want to make sure I'm where I think I am. Right, okay, so we're in some dir. So I can say dir.delete, and I can say file.txt, and not a directory file.txt, right, I'm sorry. I meant to say file.delete. As you might guess, there is also a dir.delete that we didn't discuss, but file.delete, and now if we looked in this folder here, you would see that we only have code.rb file left. Okay, so, what about, let's go back to this, um, well, I don't think I have the code here anymore, but earlier we saw that, well, let's do this first. Let's change directory back up to the desktop, 
and um, let's clear, clear this, this and let's see. So we want we've got the uh, sample directory, right? Let's say d equals uh, dir dot open, or no, we call it sum directory, right? And dir entries. We have this dot 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 encode. So let's say we want to do something inside dir entries. We want to print out all the entries. So the way we, as we saw, we could go about that would be dir dot each do file uh, puts file end, and we have our three entries put out here. But we don't want these directories, the dot dot dot, and if there were any other directories in there, we don't want to, we just want to ignore those. We just want the files that are in there. How could we do that? Well, the file has, file has a neat method that is called directory question mark. Let me make sure that's spelled right. Directory question mark. And then it takes your directory name there. And as you can see in this case, it's saying dot dot is indeed a directory from where we are. However, if we said something like um, file.txt, now I know this file doesn't exist in the current directory that it's looking at. But if we actually did something like uh, sunder slash code.rb, code.rb, then we'll be talking about a real file, but still, it's saying false because this is not a directory. So this is a great way to check if we're having a file, if it's a file or a directory. And so what we can do here, we have d, which is some directory, we can say d.each, do and pass in the file name. Then we can say next if file dot directory file name puts oops uh, puts file name I don't think I should have all right and we're gonna have a mistake there because I accidentally put in a uh, line break um, but let's look at this here puts file name end and as you can see here we get code.rb put out so what exactly did I do there this is the fancy line here that might have you tricked a bit well first of all remember that we can use um, conditional statements such as if or um, Ruby also has unless or while or anything like that in kind of loop as what they call a modifier where we put it at the end of the line and basically we're, we're saying run this code if this is true. So what we're saying here is next. We haven't discussed next in this series but as you might be able to guess Guess. Next just says skip the rest of whatever we're supposed to do in this loop or this iteration and go grab the next item and start the next loop. So what we're saying here is go to the next loop or the next item in the directory, the next entry, if file.directory file name is true. So if the file name that got passed in is a directory instead of a file, then skip it. We don't want to work with that. We only want to work with the file names. And as you can see here, that worked. We only got code.rb output instead of the dot and dot dot as well. Okay, so now that we're familiar with some of the class methods of file, let's talk about creating instances of the file method or the file class. And as you can probably guess, there are two main reasons we would want to do that. The first one is reading files and the second one is writing files. And as you can probably guess, we have file.new. And uh, let's um, change directory into some dir one more time here. And we're going to say file.new. Now, this file name can be either a file that exists or one that we want to create. It doesn't have to exist. And we're going to say file.new. And in this case, since we're reading, we're going to choose one that's um, exists, and then we have to pass in a mode that we want to open the file in. So there are a couple of modes. The four most common ones are going to be R, which stands for open it in read-only mode. The second one is W, which stands for open it in write-only mode. And in this write-only mode, um, we're going to overwrite anything that's in the file. So basically, we want to open code.rb, but if there's anything there, or basically if the file exists, we want to just wipe it clean and start with a blank file. There's also W+, plus, which is reading and writing. Again, if there's anything in the file, it'll wipe it clean first as it opens it. And then there's A, which is write only, but it will append to the file. So we have read, write, append, and write plus, which includes reading. 
So just remember that anything that has a W in it completely overwrites what's in the file. So A will write to the file, but keep what's already there, append. So in this case, let's say we want to open it for reading. Now what choices, what methods do we have for reading a file? There are a couple. But first realize that whenever we read from the file, it keeps track of how far down the file we've read, and will only and it won't allow us to, um, without us specifically telling it to, it's not like we can loop through the file. We read through the lines once we hit the end of the file, that's it. And we're reading through them in a linear way, so there's no way to just back up a line or two. What we do is we read through the file, and if at any point you'd like to go back to the beginning of the file, you can do so by calling the rewind command on the file. And I just realized I haven't captured this in a variable, so we'll store that in the variable f here. So, so if we, we say, say f dot read, read, it's going to output everything, everything that's in the whole file. file. You can, can see we have puts hello world slash n, so we have a new line there. And, and that's, that's the entire contents of the file. And if we say f dot read now, we get an empty string because there's nothing left in the file. If we say f dot rewind, it puts us back to the beginning of the file, and we can say f dot read once again. And we can get the next thing. But let's say we don't want to read the entire file file once. And the problem here is that this file only has one line of code in it. So what I'm going to do is I'll just, uh, let's see if I drag it over here to Vim. Uh, let's put a few extra lines in here. We'll put, or put, we'll say, um, x equals 1 plus 3 plus x um, plus end of file. That's, That's enough for now. now. Um, we may have, have to recreate this file just, just like that. that. OK. So now if we say f dot read as before, you see we get the entire file in one string with new lines uh, in, in there as a backslash n. So now let's rewind the file. OK. So we can also use f dot read line. And as you can see, we get the first uh, line of the file there. If I recall the same method, we get the second line, third line, fourth line. And, and if, if we, we call it again, again after hitting the last line, we get f, uh, we, we get uh, an end of file error. error. The end file, file has been reached. Um, an, an alternate to this, let's say f dot rewind first, would be f dot gets. And gets just, just returns us the very same thing, thing one line at a time. The only the difference is when we call f dot gets after reaching the end, we don't get an error, we get just nil, which may be preferable depending on how you write your application. If instead of wanting to get uh, each line one at a time, you want to get them all at once, but not in a single string as we had before, you can use f dot read lines with an s on the end there, read lines plural. Now we get each line, except each line has become uh, an entry in an array. And so we have an array here with each line as an entry in the array. And of course, after this, if we try to read lines, we get an empty array if we want to read. We get an empty string if we call gets. It's nil. So just like the others, it reads us through to the end of the file and leaves us there. OK, let's look at one more way of doing it. And you would probably think, if you think about Ruby for a while, you'll think, or you'll understand that this makes perfect sense in having this method here. And that is f dot each. Ruby likes that each method. And it does exactly what you think, and then it passes each line to a block. So we can say a line, and we can say puts line, and and here we get each line put out, just like that. One by one, it'll pass each line to the block, and do exactly what you expect. OK, finally we have writing. Let's open a new file here. We're going to use that same variable f, file.open, uh, let's call file.txt, and open a w there. And we can, we can use, use f dot. There are actually only two ways to write to a file. f dot puts, so we can say, uh, or actually, let's call this first line, and f dot write. And we'll say second f dot write line. And the reason I've done it this way is to show you, well, first two things. Puts returns nil, and write returns the number of characters we wrote. But also, but also puts, puts by uh, automatically, automatically adds a line, line break at the end of the string that we're submitting. Meanwhile, write 
uh, does, does not, not do that. that. And, and so, so here, here we're we're actually, we've actually, actually only written two lines to this file. The first is the first line, and the second would say second line. line. And, and so, so if we change f here to be final dot open, and actually what I'll do here is I'll show you how to use the alternate version. Here we can say file dot open file dot txt. We want to read it, and then we're going to say do, and we'll take the uh, actually it's not a line, it's a file object that we get passed into the block. And then, and then we, we can say, say, just say uh, uh, file dot each do line puts line and end. Okay, okay, you can, you can see, see that nothing's put out. out. And, and that, that may be because, because we haven't actually closed the file yet. yet. So, so what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say f dot close, which I believe is how we close the file. And if we look at it in here, you'll be able to see that indeed we have first line and second line. Now let's try to read this again here. Let's clear this. And, and say file dot open file dot txt. txt. Actually, Actually, wait, are we in, in the right? right. Yes, yes, we are. Okay, so we have file dot open uh, file dot txt, txt, and then we can, we can say read. read. And we're gonna do file, and so let's, let's just say puts file to make sure we're getting the file object there. Yes, we get exactly what we want. And now in here we're gonna say file dot each do line and, and we're going to say, say line uh, puts line and end and, 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 and there you can see we have it properly first line and second, second line exactly as you would expect i should I mention here that the actual, actual file class is inheriting from ruby's io class which is where it's getting all these it's getting the ability to open files like this and the ability to Read, read files, files and write to files, files. That's, that's all from the I.O. class. class. Um, the quote class, class methods that I showed you earlier are really the only way or the only things, um, as I understand it, that are actually stored in the final class. class. Uh, the uh, rest of those are inherited from I.O. The I.O. class, which as you can see here, we have I.O. And that is a class in Ruby. So that is what we're going to look at today. Well, well, that's, that's been Ruby, Ruby for Newbies Chapter 7. 7. In sum, we, we have looked at the dir class and the class methods and instance methods of it, as well as the class and instance methods of the final class. Before we go, of course, we have to do our Ruby resource for the week, and this one is the Ruby Learning blog. RubyLearning.com has several uh, different, different resources, resources that it offers, and, and one, one of them is the Ruby Learning blog, rubylearning.com slash blog. They have some great articles here, um, some really intense stuff um, covering a lot of popular Ruby topics, and I really recommend you check them out. Um, they also have Ruby courses, so if you want to augment your Ruby learning, you can head over there to sign up for some of their courses. Um, I believe some of them, to be honest right now, I don't remember if any of them are free, but I know, I think they have free ones, and I'm pretty sure they have paid ones as well, of course. Um, so, um, so you'll, you'll want to check, check those out. out. I, I, I know the paid ones are not very expensive, expensive at all for the um, depth, depth of the material they offer. Before, Before we go, we go though, I have one, one more thing that I want to ask you, and that is where do you want this Ruby for Newbies series, series to go from, from here? here? There, there are really, really two ways we could take it, and one is to continue learning the core Ruby language as we've done here. And the other is to go in the direction of Ruby as it's used on the web, in things like Sinatra and Ruby on Rails, and that kind of thing. Both, Both directions, directions will be really useful, useful to you as a web developer and as a developer in general. But I'm wondering, what did you guys, as the ones who actually watch and read and this stuff, um, I want to know what you would like to see. So let me know, and I'll give that some consideration before we move on with this series. Thanks so much for watching Ruby for Newbies, and I'll see you later.